Hello from Larissa, Greece. It's mid-November and we have perfect weather, about 20 degrees. This airfield is situated about 10 kilometers out of the city center. And as you can see, it's rather amazing. Facilities for both ultralight airplanes and radio control folks. And everything's here, electricity, water, food, roof, tables, chairs. So if you want to travel here, you can do with not much baggage. Also the uh, arrangement is interesting since organizer pays for most things. For example, there's no uh, entry fee for the competition. Food is free. We had dinner last evening. And as I heard last year, even the hotel was paid by the organizer. I was told the flying school that they have here is uh, rather well uh, going, so they can afford to pay all these expenses to the competitors. We are now waiting for the first round of the fly-off with nine pilots. This guy here is the RF-5, the reconnaissance version of the F-5, popularly known as the tar Tiger Eye. I moved to this cotton field based on the wind direction. As you can see from the smoke, it's coming my way. And I expect the pilots will also come my way. So today sunny weather, although yesterday we had overcast sky with absolutely no wind and bar barely any thermals. It was mostly a competition of who has their model trimmed for the minimum sink rate. To the northeast you can see fresh snow on the Olympus mountain because we had a storm that passed us overnight. Now we have 20 seconds to start. The line is behind the tower. Let's see. So three pilots decided to go to their left over the tree line and the rest of them are above the cotton field as I expected. Heights I would say from 40 meters onwards up to 80 maybe 90. Very weak wind today as well, just a breeze now and then that indicates the direction where the thermal bubble started to rise. Despite the clear sky and strong sun, it's mid-November and thermals are not as strong as we are used to. You can see those planes are going up, but slowly, slowly. Nothing dramatic here.
One could almost say that this is how things happen in Greece. Very relaxed, no hurry, easy going. So the other two planes to my left also climbing slowly. And there is now a rare sight. I see a bird just beyond those wires. So I guess this will be Boring 15 minutes, I guess I should probably move back to the line and see how the landing goes. One pilot decided to come back and try again over the field, but not an issue at all. In a day like this and with the rainy night you can find rising air almost anywhere. So maybe it's interesting to note that behind those trees there is a river. And we were told that if you land behind those trees, you have to make a trip of 25 kilometers to get on the other side. Or you can choose to swim. He's gaining a bit. Mm -hmm. Because the sun is shining to that wood. And that's probably enough moisture. Yeah. Now on the ground. Yep. He's the air is rising just about everywhere. Yeah, but he was quite low there. High enough. Yeah. Just caught it off the edge of the woods. Yeah, he said he's okay now. The others back there are like, whoa. Two minutes to go. Some pilots are now flying on their back, while others are already lost enough height and are now slowly coming back. We had a mid-air touch. It was quite loud and for a moment it looks like one of the planes might not be recoverable, but the pilot managed to get it back under control and they decided to fly till the end. So I guess that means we won't have a refly. Thank 
And this is now close to the tower. Don't make anything stupid here, guys. You've heard that. Another touch. Very well done. So, as you can see, there is almost no grass on the ground because it looks like the whole field is grazed by a flock of sheep. And that at least for me made landings very difficult because either your model just landed and slided for five meters or it's stuck directly nose down into the soft ground. So it's rather hard to hit the spot. Probably you have to aim for three or four meters before the spot lands there and let the model slide. I'll try another angle, which is maybe not the best since it will be mostly into the sun. As you can see, starting is done here the way it is written in FAI rules and not as we mostly used to fly from the corridor as it is in FT3J rules. Now I don't know whom to follow. So now it looks like all the pilots went to the north. No one behind me, no one to my left or right. They are all over there. And it looks like there is good air, just not for the bottom one. But I'm sure he will also make it. Probably the goal now is to avoid any mid-air collisions. And fly safely for 15 minutes. Apparently that crow behind me agrees. It's getting rather tight. I'm sure the pilots are able to spread out from this height and find their own balloons. They don't have to stick together 
in this kind of weather. And another hit. And let's see what happens. Boats are continuing to fly, okay? And this kind of sport speeds are rather low and if it's not a head-on collision and then just a touch at an angle there's a good chance that planes are able to continue flying safely and in a controlled manner maybe if the tail is hit or a part of wing falls off then things are more interesting Again, it looks like all the pilots will make 15 minutes and I'll move to the landing spots. So pilots did spread out around 6 minutes into the flight. Now we have 1 minute and 25 seconds to go. And they're all in uh, preparing to land. Some interesting approach methods that I wouldn't recommend. Everyone in time. Okay. Let's now wait for the third flight. I'll try another angle. So again the pilots opted for the cotton field behind these hangars and again I'm recording into the sun this time they decided to risk much more 
started much lower. Let's see. Looks like this one will be interesting. So there's another one over the clubhouse and the tower trying to get something from the barbecue behind there probably. Maybe she'll get that. And the crowd here is also trying to find something. So it's going up slightly, slowly and looks like they will end up in the same spot in the sky again. I almost have to turn my phone sideways because all the action is in one narrow vertical. So I still have one plane above my head. And that one is flying solo, the rest of the crowd is slowly climbing here. At moments looks like the planes are uncomfortably close, but so far pilots managed to, to evade each other. So looks like all you need in November thermals is patience. I'm much more used to uh, spring situations where you can find narrow thermals that go up at 3 meters per second or even more. But at the end of season, end of year, I usually stop flying and don't have much experience in this kind of weather. So this is now five minutes into the flight and the pilots maybe gained 100 meters or so. And now there's a small cloud of flies around me so flies can be annoying here on this field as I said there are sheep all around and with cattle there come flies and you can do nothing about it maybe I'll try to move
pilots are now spreading out and I expect the rest of the flight to be rather uninteresting but one interesting thing I did notice is that there are lenticularis clouds developing east of Olympus mountain and sailplane pilots should know this well because they show where you can ride the air waves that usually develop behind mountain ridges Two minutes to go and this is how you can do flying, just sitting on the ground looking at your radio. Suspense. <laughs> Again, some flying on the back. One minute to go, and still some altitude to lose. So at 30 seconds I would usually be downwind already doing the turn into final but these guys are really tight on the final. And one over time, unfortunately. Okay, now let's wait for the results. Bravo!